Welcome to game. Hey guys, and welcome to JT Live, where today, a little slight change of plans than what we expected from yesterday. So, as you can see, we are on the couch alone, and I say we as if there's someone else on the couch alone with me. It's a bit odd for me to say that I'm on the couch alone and then use the plural. Uh, Peepachu, I got Peepachu here, so we are on the couch alone. Me and Peepachu and water bottle, television remote. We're here on the couch alone. Uh, sadly, Stephanie got super sick uh, after yesterday's live stream, just like got hit with a train of illness. Uh, so she's not here. So that kind of prevented us from playing Luigi's Mansion. Honestly, I really wanted to play with Stephanie more, especially if we get to like Gooigi sections. I really want to play with Steph. So, you know, what bet? I feel like FNAF VR has truly been my little solo outing. This this little birdie taking his little solo flight out into the world. And why change that now? I think Steph's been in for maybe two of the like FNAF VR streams in total, two or three, uh, of all the different ones that we've done. So really, this is our house. This is our game, right, Chris? Yeah. It's you behind the TriCaster, me sitting on the couch briefly before I transition into a standing position where I'm no longer able to see the camera or any comments or anything because my head is strapped with a VR visor. But there we go, ladies and gentlemen. So, so the original plan was to play Luigi's Mansion, but because Stefan isn't, isn't here, uh, and because literally there's only three of us, uh, Jason's on vacation, Amy's on vacation, Stephanie is sick, uh, and so you're, you're stuck with me, Dan, and Chris. It is literally just the trio of boys here, hanging out, playing games, eating hamburgers, and hopefully beating Five Nights at Freddy's VR Help Wanted DLC Curse of Dreadbear. Woo! Try to say that three times fast, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so, so really, that's it. I figured I'm here alone. VR works. Chris is going to man the chat. He's going to man the Twitter. Uh, and hopefully together we can finally beat this thing, grind through it, and get to the secrets that you all want me to see, that I'm very eager to see, and that I kind of need to see because I got to start writing theories on this before it becomes completely irrelevant. Um, curse you, YouTube, and your limited window of relevancy for any topic that you might want to talk about at any given point in time. <laughs> so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is our game plan for today. We got two games that we got to beat, right? We got to beat the corn maze with all five keys. Yesterday, we got four keys multiple times, but just couldn't close off in the end. And we also need to beat the final night of the Five Nights at Freddy's kind of section. We got to beat Dreadbear. Uh, so those are the two things we got to do. And if we accomplish that, we're done. Good. Gonzo. Fantastic. Uh, you can engage with today's stream where Chris has drawn <laughs> a glitchy key that's almost as hard to see as the one in the actual game. This Wow. I mean, tell you what, friends. <laughs> there have been some low points in the artwork of Chris. Some low points. This like might rank up there with the Triforce that you drew. The, uh, the lopsided Triforce that Chris tried to draw where he couldn't even get a triangle right was rough. This is I don't I mean, know this why is like next level some of my best work. You can't even tell point. that the key has teeth. Well, that's because it's hard to see. Like it's a, it's a, it's a glitchy it's a glitchy key. Hey, you know what, guys? <laughs> uh, Chris is manning the chat and on Twitter today, so please tell him what you think of his artwork. Ah, well, Clutter4 says who's ready for MatPat Insanity Simulator, but Edward Styles, probably speaking on the artwork, says, uh... And, ooh, ooh, we have Mudbog Joker, who says, I love his key. Well, there you go. Don't encourage him. <laughs> don't, don't encourage him, friends. So anyway, uh, that's the plan for today. I'm going to take a swig of water. Bottoms up. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I know, and now I'm going to hop into it. Ah! All right. Let's do this, let's not waste any time. We got, you know, not a whole lot to accomplish, but it'll probably take a whole lot of time because you just gotta have those couple of perfect runs, you know? So even though, 
even though uh, we only have really two main mini games that we want to finish. Boop! Boop! Uh, I want to make sure that we use as much of the time as possible getting there. It could be a short stream, it could be a long stream. It could be a stream where literally nothing happens, and if that's the case, I apologize. I hate streams where we make no progress on the games that we're playing. Trust me, that is always my deepest, darkest fear. I always feel like I'm letting you down in those sorts of streams. But I'm going to try my darndest to get there, all right, and make some progress here. Here's the thing. Speaking of making progress, where's Showtime? Why, why does Showtime not exist in this game? Thank you, Grace Sanders, who says the key is amazing. <laughs> and thank you, no. I think you're just making up these comments at this I point, I am not. Chris. I'm reading them. I don't, I don't believe that Kaylee these people Kuhn exist. Kaylee says Chris is a great art maker. Probably a more accurate, accurate description than artist. <laughs> art maker. <laughs> art, art maker feels fairly accurate, actually. I'll, I'll give you art maker. <laughs> Artist feels a bit extreme, I gotta say. Oh, and Snoot Snoot Hoodle Doot says, "Oh, you could never let us down, Matt Pat." Thanks, guys. I appreciate that. But I, I, I mean, I do, and I, I've mentioned this on live streams in the past. But I do really care. Oh, darn it! I do really care about making sure that you guys, I don't know, see stuff happening in the games as we play them. You know, like I recognize. Oh. Thanks. Thanks, Foxy. That was super scary. I recognize that it's frustrating to watch someone like... Come on. I recognize how frustrating... Oh, shoot. Oh, I'm dead. I'm dead already. Yeah. All right. Good. Good start. I was rushing, though. I'm trying to get through these first keys a little bit quicker, at least. Uh, but no, I recognize how frustrating it can be to just, like, watch someone grind away at the same thing over and over and over again. It's like, you know, you're trying your best, and I'm trying to deliver you fun, witty commentary as we... Hey, can we... As we go through it, certainly. Uh, well, this maze is particularly hard for it, because it's pretty terrifying, and it's, you know... It's hard to find everything. Right, and it's also one that kind of requires me to listen, and so it's hard for me to like talk at the same time. Like, there's just, there's just a lot of challenges going on in general uh, with it. Huh, the key's in the same spot this time. That's good to know. Man, maybe we can define... Oh, God, I love those birds so <laughs> much. They are the best. Oh, no! Oh no. Where's the hiding spot? Where's the hiding? Nope. Nope. Shoot! John Kidwell says, How do I do Twitter? If you find the answer, Sean, please let us know. <laughs> how do how does one do Twitter? <laughs> Excellent question. You know, you're asking the question that all of us wonder on a daily basis. <laughs> what is the right way to do Twitter? I have yet to see it done in a way I would call right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is interesting. So the key is showing up here every time so far. I don't know what exactly that means, but I'm going to say let's continue down this consistent pathway. Foxy also seems to be following a fairly consistent path, which is interesting. Like, he has chased me down that same area pretty much every time. That is good to know. So I'm gonna try to create a consistent pathway for the first three turns of this game. Wow. And, then, and then everything from that point forward. Whoa, hey, second key. Uh, oh no! Did that glitch him away? Shoot, he's over there. I saw him. Briefly. Nope, 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 nope. Wow, where are all the... Ugh. Get to a place where I can hide. Okay, here we go. Well, I got two keys, quickly. That's exciting. Yeah, that's nice. Honestly, you like... You have gotten faster at finding all the keys, it seems, every time. It's just this last seemingly invisible key. Yeah, I... I where are you at? Okay. 
right? The invisible, it's the invisible key. So that's interesting. I'm, you know what? I'm gonna go back to the center of the maze. I'm gonna try out something new. I got my two keys. I'm gonna see if I can maneuver my way. Back to the center if I actually remember it. Huh. Where it is. Or at least around the center. Because I feel like I've actually gotten a pretty decent, here we go. He's gone. Who is that, by the way? Is that supposed to be? Oh, hey, I heard Foxy again. But yeah, who who is this? Fun time, Foxy? What character is like a white cat? It must be. <laughs> it must be Fun Time Foxy. That's weird. I'm gonna stay here because I hear Foxy around me. Here it is. What the heck? You didn't charge me? Oh, come on, you poop head. That was lame. That was so lame. That was max lame. You didn't give me your sound cue, buddy. I heard, I knew you, I was waiting for you. That was lame. But in positivity news, Roblox 990, Watkins White, says, hey, how are you guys doing? Also, tell Stephanie that I'm sending her all my love and luck. Oh. Which is just very nice. That's, that's very sweet. I read that in, in my usual voice, which might sound sarcastic, but I did try to give it a genuine flair. I was gonna say, it sound, you know what? It sounded nice. So here's something I'm learning about this, is the fact that, well, there he is, but can you think about what it is? Is the fact that, so when I took a turn to the left, right? There was, uh, there he is. Wow, you did not proceed the way that you should have. So you can, so Foxy can break, come on, come on, there you go. So Foxy can break physical laws outside of just when he teleports after he chases you, so that's good to know. It's also good to know that when I first started and turned to the left, like I've been every time, the key's in a different position, but also the decoration on the left was slightly shifted. So instead of facing like one of these purple walls, I was facing a, a blank fence, which is interesting and worth There it is. There it goes, okay. So I think there are probably certain patterns of spawn locations for the keys and potentially a hint as to what spawn locations you're dealing with is going to depend on the layout of the like actual decorations of the maze itself which is i don't know if that's particularly helpful in any way but it's interesting i hear you there's a key over there by the way I hear you I hear you there you great okay so red key and what did we say yesterday were the hard keys? Yellow? No. Green? Uh, the green zone is a hard zone, but I think you get the blue key near the green zone? Right, they're kind of all over the place. There he is. There you are. Man of the hour. Man of the hour himself. Foxy! The, the fiery pumpkin creature. Foxy the fiery pumpkin. Nope, nothing there. Uh -huh. I'm a child, says, I'm wearing my surround sound headphones and this is terrifying. Right? It sucks. Ooh. Whoa, hey. Where you at? Where you at? Hey. Okay. Joe I don't know. Hill, you are noticed. I don't know about you, but that, uh, that shadow a foxy walking and yet not being able to like see where he actually is. That was pretty terrifying. Um, this is one of the scarier foxies and foxy's already pretty scary. Oh, this is, I, I, this is actually far and away one of my favorite animatronic versions of really any of the characters. The, the jack-o-lanterns actually like the, the lantern characters are some of my favorites just because I think their design, I, I like how they're bright, 
which helps, I don't know, like, kind of how ripped apart and torn they are, it, like, stand out. It's, it's really cool. Um, I like how kind of, like, glow-in-the-darky they are. Here we go. Okay. Pretty rad looking. Right? They're kind of fun. They're like, I know that they're like the Jacko whatevers, but I like to think of them as the Dayglow <laughs> animatronics. Yeah? Yeah, the Dayglow animatronics. Hmm. No? You don't think so? Alright, I gotta get out of this section of the park, because this is giving me a big old goose egg. Ooh, Knight, Knight the Dark Rye Master says this is my first time being able to watch a live stream That live. is, that is very exciting. So we're at three. Oh man. Right? I'm gonna hang out here because we should just wait for him at this point. Hear him. Hear him. There he is. There we go. So we're at three. We got blue. We're looking for green at this point, friends. Looking for green. There's, there's a green glow right there. Maybe I'll go that way. But first, we just check around here because we can. Gotta love the maze elements of this whole thing. I am so lost. I mean, there's yellow. Here you. Where you at? What? Oh, come on! What is that? Why is that happening? Why? Because, because life is never easy. <laughs> because the game hates me. <laughs> because the game is like, no, Mad Pat shan't uncover the secret lore that we have hidden here. See, the last time it was on the right, this time it's on the left. And the first two times that we had kind of those initial, uh, see like, so when it's on the right, it's right here. When it's on the left, yeah, it's it, that's interesting. So the key won't be here. Oh, he does that. He does that almost every time. Which is worth calling out too. So, the keys have probably three different spawn locations based on, and you can tell what the spawn locations are based on that initial kind of pattern, design pattern of the whole uh, corner. Dun, 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 so honestly, th that's my assumption. Honestly, if you wanted to cheese it in some capacity, you could potentially just die a bunch of times until you sp oh hey this was, this actually worked out well i was just going this way to check out what was over here but this actually is nice um what you could do potentially is cheese it a bunch of times if this theory ends up proving true and just die a whole lot until you get kind of a pattern that you already know or have been practicing, and you could potentially just run through the maze over and over again. Huh. I don't know if that's true. Um, I'm gonna keep playing as though like that is not the case. However, if we, if we end up getting to a point where it's cycled back around and I'm back to kind of that like right hand spawn with the design on the right hand side, I uh choose to do that. Okay. All right. Instead of like wandering around and just like at least then you'll have a fairly consistent idea of where everything might be. Okay, so we got yellow. We are here. I hear someone. There's a, there's a hiding spot. There's a hidey hole. Hidey hole, hidey hole. Nothing around here. I mean, can you imagine? Like, I actually really enjoy corn mazes, by the way, as a fall activity, even though when I was living in New York, it was very difficult to find places with any sort of, you know, natural setting. You had to go way out of the city in order to find anything kind of like 
fall festy like a corn maze. But, uh, oh, shoot. I'm dead. I don't think I've ever done an actual corn maze. I assume, is this correct that it's just a lot of corn stalks? Uh, they do them in different ways, right? Like, some actually make mazes out of corn. Those are, like, the legit ones, and those are probably the most fun. Where, if you really wanted to, you could, you know, and people do, cut through the corn and, like, kind of cheat, cheat their way through. Um, yeah, yeah. So this is far and away the, the worst of the spawn locations. Um, come on, there you are. But, the, uh, my, so... But those are like my favorite because they're like real. You know, you're actually like doing a legit maze in corn. And they kind of make them like crop circles. You know, how they like just press down a bunch of corn. Hey, look, here we are. There's the opening. Um, so those are legitimately really fun. Um, okay. There we go. Uh, <laughs> you missed. I don't know how I was able to hide behind that thing when you were standing in front of it, but I'm not going to question it. Um, so I, I like those sorts of corn mazes. There, oh hey, there's a blue one. Finally, jeez, I feel like I've been wandering around this one a lot. Um, I just need to find a place to hide. Find a place to hide. Seriously, find a place to hide. Okay, there we go. Um, he should be around here soon. Uh, there he is. Thank you, chasing me, great. Um. But then you do have things like this, right, where they either pile up haystacks or they pile up, uh, like, uh, uh, fences or anything like that to have you run through them as well. Uh, yeah. I guess know. a haystack makes the most sense Shoot. in terms of ease. Right, yeah, like a big hay barrel or a big old haystack works. Um, but, yeah, corn is far and away the best. The, the thing I also like about hay mazes or uh, corn mazes is the fact that a lot of one, a lot of them aren't aren't just a maze, but they'll also mix in some level. Oh hey, some level of gameplay element, where there will also be like, hey, here is uh, a bunch of like riddles or uh, points of interest hidden around the maze that you have to hit uh, and collect like stickers from or answer like the secret words from or whatever and. If you go through them all, you can, you know, sometimes, like, unlock, uh, they'll, like, they'll have a prize or something for you at the end. Or, like, you get some candy or something like that. Huh. Yeah. That sounds nice. No, it's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's kind of, I mean, it's, it's like an escape room, almost, you know? Yeah. That sounds, I kind of, I would like that, just like an opening. There's, uh, there's some pretty good ones, actually, around... I lost track of where I'm, go I'm going this way, right? Um, there's some pretty good ones in and around. Uh, it would be far from your house, Chris, but there's a couple down in the uh, like Long Beach -y area. Uh, oh, ooh, hey, <laughs> that was tight. Um, there's one that we were at the other weekend called Tanaka Farms. Um, that was pretty good. Do they have a corn? They have a, wait, is that just a fall fest or do they have a corn maze? I forget. Um, shoot, no, I'm, oh, shoot, there he is. Oh, shoot, 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 shoot. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, reach it, reach it, no! Oh, darn it. That would have been so cool. If I had actually been able to avoid that, yeah. If, it, if that had worked. Oh, man. I know. Like I said, it's a bunch of grinding away. Okay. Oh, so Kobe hey, Davis we're asks, are y'all are y'all checking the chat? Chris is a little bit. Chris, Adeline Plepo says corn mazes are the best. I'm glad we agree. Also, you're an oh no, excuse me, it's Peepo with two eyes. It's still a really cool name. So, this is this is true. Uh, it's the we're in the kind of the new spawn again. So. The decoration is right in the center of that first turn, and already I know where two keys are. So it seems like my theory is right that there are three rotations of the maze that the game is cycling through. So that's maybe good to know. Maybe that's what we'll do. 
maybe we will actually try. And he shouldn't get me here. Because if all of a sudden we map out where we're going and how. Wait, where's the second key? I, wait, where'd that second key go? Shoot! I thought there was a second key right there. Did I miss it up? Hmm. Hmm. Did I screw it up? No! I might have. Stay here, though. Yeah, I know, right? I hear you. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? There you are. Great, thank you. Thanks for that. Appreciated. Appreciated our time together. That was very nice. Ah, uh, yes. There he is. Ah, uh, yes. Phasing behind the fence. I see. Woohoo! Red key. Great. Thank you. Hmm. Red key. Who knows? Sydney Cousineau asks, Matt Pat. Yes. That's, that's how it begins. What was your favorite or is your favorite animatronic in all of FNAF history? Wow. That's intense. Uh, that's, that's a big old question right there. Uh, I liked and have always had a particular fondness for Foxy. Like, Foxy has always been, like, my favorite overall, I would say. Um, hey, buddy. There we go. Uh, that being said... So Foxy's always been kind of like my favorite of the core four. Uh, Withered Bonnie from FNAF 2 I think is really interesting because I think the whole like, he's missing a face. I think that's a really creepy design that not a lot of other games have really taken advantage of in the animatronic design. I think. Great. Um, so I've always been a big fan of Withered Bonnie. Foxy, definitely. And uh, also, uh, let's see. <laughs> I, I'd, say, I'd say, I'd actually say those two. Um, I know a lot of people really like Baby and stuff. I've never been a big Baby fan. Um, come on, there we go. Uh, so like, if I were to pick my least favorites, I'd say some of the ones from Sister Location. Like Baby, I was never a big fan of, which is kind of blasphemous to say. Uh, Ballora, I think is just kind of odd uh, and kind of shoved in there. Uh, so I've never been a big fan of her. Uh, okay. I hear you. I hear you again. No, hey. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. But yeah, so that, that, that would be my take. I also like uh, some of the Funtime animatronics a lot. Uh, like I think Funtime, like I do think Funtime Foxy is, is legitimately a cool design. And I like Funtime, Fox, Funtime Foxy's personality. Um, and I think like the puppet is also, like even though it's not technically an animatronic. I think the puppet's always been, like, I think the puppet has the most interesting character from the lore standpoint. So those are, those are my choices and I'm sticking with them. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. It was, it was a robust answer. I know, right? I mean, I've thought a lot about this franchise, you know? This, this might come as a surprise to you, but I have spent a lot of time with the various animatronics. Hey, okay, I'm looking for green. Green is close to where again? If you can hit me up with that info, that would be great. Is green close to blue? Is that what it is? <laughs> if anyone knows, let Chris know. So that way he can tell me. Yeah, shout it out in the chat. Meanwhile on Twitter, nobody101 at girl101lazy. 
uh, <laughs> says in reference to your comment about respecting the baby community, I thought Matt actually meant real babies for a second. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 never been a big fan of, you know, babies like the one that I have right now. No. That's hilarious. <laughs> no respect to. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot, I triggered it too early. Okay, there we go. <laughs> With all due respect to babies. <laughs> That's great. No, I, I like, I, you know what? I gotta say, uh, since having a baby, I do appreciate babies more now than I did before. Like, that is actually very accurate. Because uh, I understand. Okay. I understand them a little bit better. I like kind of have a better grasp of like what they're going through as like new human beings and how hard it is to like learn what you need in order to, you know, survive as an entity. Ooh, Here you. that was a fun sound. Right, that was a good one. Okay, there he is. Okay, so Carrot here. Cake Creation says green is by the blue gate, so you must be close. Right, green is by the blue gate. Okay. Blue gate is. Mm, see, I'm a little confused now. Hold up, I gotta turn it back around. Oh, here's blue gate. So it should be around here. Where you at? Here you. See, the problem is when he rounds corners too tightly, that's when he catches me, because without the sound. Oh. Like, that's what I'm trying to adjust for now. I hear you. Okay, there he comes, down that hallway. He could be chasing me here now. Here he comes, here he comes again. Okay, I'm, I've moved away from the blue gate, so I should probably hang out here until I despawn him. But then I'll make my way back over to blue land. Here he comes. You are noticed. Christian Burton says, new theory, newborn babies are potatoes. I don't know if that's true, but it is an interesting theory. I mean, that's why they call it just a theory. A life theory. A baby theory. I don't know. Fiona Bisexual Gillaspie, or Gillaspie, says, hey Zeus, how are you so calm? Well, you have done this maze a few times. Yeah, I think, like I, I said this a little bit, Ooh, this, this section's tough. I said this. Shoot, 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 I need, oh, darn it, darn it, oh, come on. Screw you. See, that section through the blue area is really tough, because there is nothing. You are just out of luck. If he catches you there, there's nothing you can do. Oh, that is so frustrating, because that was going well. Interesting, and this time you have this whole wall painted, so that's a new, so that's a new iteration too. I hear you, and there you are. I saw you already, so that's cool. I'm just gonna run to this section right here. So the key, a lot of times, just hangs out right there. Have you basically always been getting the yellow first? Uh, I mean... It does seem to be the one that keeps appearing in the same spot. So maybe... Yeah, maybe I'll mix it up. So I know where yellow is. I really don't know how you're keeping track of... ...where you are. I'm getting a, b I mean, here's the thing. You run this enough times, you get a start to get a better sense of it. It's I guess you are literally in it too. I mean, the thing is, like, 
I still don't have a good understanding of how the different sections connect to each other, right? I'm getting a better understanding of individual areas and like maybe not where the keys are hidden, but at least where the hiding spots are. It's more so my problem happens how they connect to each other. Like that opening section, I have a good understanding of like, oh, that's the danger area. So like if you're running through past the blue gate, you'd have to immediately find a, a good hiding spot because that one's going to be brutal. Um, but when it comes to like how the blue section then blends into kind of the red section or what, like that's what I've been having a hard time with is understanding the connection point between the two. Are you kidding me? Are you not coming? Oh Where are God. you? Where are you? Come on. I hear you. I hear you being all scrapey and spooky. I hear you being scrapey spooky. Spooky you know, scrapey. It would be fun if, if Scott worked in like a, a shout button. So if you got impatient and you just needed a monster to appear so you could hide, you could, your character could just go, Ha! <laughs> That's funny. At the same time, though, that would be pretty broken, right? Because if I could summon him, then I could hide, like, I would be able to control it a lot better, you know? Is he, is he really not coming at me at this point? Are you kidding me? Is this just, like, some magic area right now that he's just not interested in pursuing? Am I... Am I gonna move out of this section and then immediately get yeah there that spawned him? Hey, bye. Unacceptable, unacceptable, Foxy. You were just waiting for me to do all the work for you, wasn't it? You knew. You could sense that I was in a hiding hole. Here's the cruelest part of this: is once you get all the keys, you still gotta find that last one. That sucks. I'm really curious if it's possible to find that key before you found the other ones. No, clearly not. I feel like I'm going to say no. I think it must spawn. Because like, I feel like at so just by the laws of probability, we would have seen it at some point, you know? Mm. Oh, come on. Are you kidding? Where are, where are all the keys? I hear you. I agree. This is the best I'm doing great. What am I? Interesting family tree pattern on the grave. Just haven't really stopped to look at some of the details of this. It's also worth calling out the fact that this is, uh, hey. These are supposed to be like you know, little photo opportunities for the kittens. And yet, look at how tall they all are. Like, the head holes. Hey, there's blue keys. <laughs> the head holes are all, like, enormously high. Oh, that is really funny. Right? Like, look at this thing. It's way up there. It's so tall. So I got blue, that's exciting. I got one of the hard ones, quote unquote. So blue and green are the hard ones. Yellow is, seems to be the easy, and red is just kinda, just kinda thrown in there. Thrown in the mix. Hmm. Just kinda hanging out. With everyone else having a grand old time. I hear you. Dum -dum 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 Thanks, buddy. Thanks for almost freezing into me. Here. here, where'd you go? Come back here. There we go. <laughs> there it is. Channa Bickford says tall baby theory. <laughs> tall baby. <laughs> right, I mean, even if you look at like our height in this game, it's, it's pretty small relative to like the gravestones and all that stuff. There's never anything hidden in this back area. Well, I'm, that's me pulling the headset out of the computer. That's cool. Mm, so good. We're gonna have to make a map of this game, aren't we? And just like n notch out all the different areas that we know keys spawn, so that way we can just like run and chase them down. Just a giant battle map. Right, kind of. There you are. 
battle map. That's cool. I like that idea. Hey, there's a key. That's the red key. I'll take that. I'm happy with, I'm happy with the red key. If I can get over there. If only my character could do basic calisthenics and get over an object that is literally waist high. It's nah. a classic video game problem. Well, in the words of Min Min Meow Meow, likes forever. Mm. In the words of Little Miss Fortune herself. Okay, so I was... Where was that key? There it is. Ooh, hovering over the phantom hay bale. That's a new one. You don't see many of the keys hovering over the hay barrels. It's kind of exciting. It's new. Oh. Oh, 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 hi, buddy. <laughs> He's like, aha, you found a key. Now's my chance. Letting my guard down. Mm. Oh, Victoria Varag has a comment in the chat I think you'll like. Yeah? One might say this whole thing is spooky. Ha! Hey -o. Well played. <laughs> there we go. Run away. Excellent. Okay. Spooky. Spooky, scary skeletons. Alright, alright. Ah, shoot. Done that. That, was, that was sloppy of me. Hold up. Go back here. <laughs> You have like a couple inches. As it goes deeper, you have like a couple inches. And then it's like, all right, time to hide. <laughs> a couple more inches, time to hide. A couple more inches, time to hide. Maybe all of this is unlocked by just touching all the crows. <laughs> maybe that's Maybe that's the big secret of the hay maze. It gets easier the more crows you touch. Oh, I really hope that's... Oh, it's simple. You just touch all the crows. Right? Oh, green key. All right, I gotta find that yellow key that I had at the very beginning. And I'm like, I'm gonna save this for later. Because I know how to get there. Which is not the case anymore! <laughs> Hey. All right, how to get back to the center. Okay, there, 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 so it's this direction. Honestly, okay, here we go. I'm gonna get back to the center, and then from there I'll be able to find the key. And then from there it's just a free-for-all to find where that purple one is. Oh that, boy. Right? Have you, I'm looking up images right now of that yeah. purple one. Yep. It is, have you seen, have you seen what it looks like? Nope. It's basically a brown, non-glowing asset. Oh no! With really? very slight purple fuzzy glows that are like glitching around it. Oh, that's fantastic. So that is gonna be tough. Ha! Great. I love it when they don't glow. <laughs> okay, there he is. Okay, so there is yellow. There's red. Uh. Close to the center. There's yellow, there's red. Uh, there's blue. So I think the center is behind me. Yellow. Yeah, red. So the center is going to be to my right and forward a little bit. Okay. So kind of where he just came from. Or no, this way. Okay, there's yellow. Where am I going? There's the back. There's yellow. There's blue, which means I need to go this way. Yeah, I need to go with the direction he came from, basically. Okay. And again, like, the whole element of getting turned around in here is super challenging. Okay. So go towards the red, basically, is what I need. I'm just moving inch by inch because I don't want to lose the three that I have at this point. Oh, hey. man, glad my uh, controller decided to come back into motion <laughs> right as I needed it. That was useful. Oof, oh, don't love this. Fortunate. Oh my gosh. What? Nothing, I'm just like, I don't know, getting spooked now. Are you? Are you getting spooked? A little yes. bit. I'm here to protect you, buddy. 
hear you. Hey Chris, is there a reason I'm starting to see like the boundary markers all over the place at this point? Uh, unless I'm not seeing them. So I know where I'm at. Good. Okay. Okay, good. I know where the last key is at least. Uh. You must be close to the boundary though. <laughs> is that what it is? Thank you. Is it? Hold up. Right around Hold up. you right now? Oh. Okay. okay. I love that so much. Give me the key! Okay, that's four. So now comes the fun part. So it's purple and brown and kind of glitches? Yeah. It's not going to be easy to see from far away. Great. Where is it? is so fast. It is so concerning. Oh, come on. I'm so paranoid about moving out of here. <laughs> this is such a, this is a rough section right here. I need to get back. Okay, so come the way he came. This is towards the center. Here, I'm gonna go that way, I think. It's a hoop key, so the the top of it is a is a hoop. Hold up. I need to listen. Yeah. Great. Top of it is a hoop. Yeah, just a, a circle. A ring. Oop, there it is. And it's not over the the basement itself, is it? Uh, it supposedly spawns randomly. Oh, damn it. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't like how far I've had to go. I hear him. Where are you at? Oh, get out of this section. Oh, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm so twisted up in my wire, too. Okay. Oop, there it is. Oop, there it is. Okay, I'm gonna go this way. Oop, there it is. Come on. I hear you. I hear you. Okay. <laughs> Every time that sound effect plays, it sounds like he has a stomach ache. Oh? What? Check back down the uh Are you kidding me? Just... I thought I saw a glint, but it might have just been a, a normal glint. <laughs> Classic glint. Where you at? Here you. It's so funny because he never comes from the direction I expect him to come from. I will say that. I'm always surprised by where he's showing up from. Like I'm always like, oh, he's going to show up from the left, and then he oh, comes from the right or vice versa. Part of me is like, oh, if I look at the glow, that'll trigger it, but that's not it. Okay, here we go. There it is. Great. Okay. Nothing there. There it is! Oh, I see it. Yes. Okay, hold up. Just don't, patient, patient. That's not that hard to see. Patient. Ooh, that was one of those coming around the corner real tight. Come on, come on. Grab it, grab the effing key! I can't get it, hold up. Oh no, so close and yet so far. This is, <laughs> this is upsetting. This is, okay, <laughs> hold up. Okay. Come on. Grab the key. Grab the, I got it. Okay, hold up. 
Red, green. Wait, everything's... Everything is pitch black now. Oh, well, at least it's easy. Oh, God. There's yellow, there's blue. Red. Blue. Okay. Red, blue. My heart is jumping out of my chest. <laughs> I'm trying not to say anything Thanks. so I don't distract you. I gotta go this way. God, I hear, I hear something opening. Oh, please. I'm right, it's like right there. It's on the other side of that wall, I think. I heard it open, the, the uh, cellar. No! No, I was click, no! No, I oh, heard. You've gotta be kidding me. so sad it was it was it was orange which says that if I click on it it'll hide me shut up dreadbear nobody loves you you're not even canon to this franchise get out of here you Frankenstein wannabe maybe I still have all the keys no. It was one wall away. I had it. I heard the cellar open. I was there. Oh. Oh, that is so frustrating. Oh my god. A lot of Fs in the chat right now. Oh, that sucks. That sucks so much. Oh, I am so bummed. I'm sorry, like, and you guys saw it, right? Like, it was orange. I was clicking on it. Well, the game, like, clearly glitched out, too, because you didn't die right away, and you didn't go behind the billboard. It was, like, right? some like, sort it was... of weird moment. It, right? It was so... Oh, that sucks so much. I am so, so bummed. Oh, get out of here, I'm so dead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we had it! <laughs> oh, that is so disheartening. So, to add to all the things that I'm trying to keep track of, now, I'll just, you know, not just be too tight around a corner and also have it glowing orange in my sights to make sure I'm safe. I'll also just, in the future, make sure I'm standing nigh on in front of the damn thing <laughs> since apparently the side is not enough of an active box to activate. So, great. So in addition, to making sure that he and I make eye contact, to make sure that he stops accordingly and charges at me in the effective way. Uh, uh, that's my feelings right now. That is, that is my unadulterated, pure feelings in this moment right now. Come on. Oh, we were there. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, now you work. Sure, sure, now you work. That's fine, that's cool. Great, thanks so much for working now. When I have one key, great. And he's super slow moving. It's fine, thank you, game. I'm salty, sorry. <laughs> I think Might that be a, is oh, just uh oh, so. I'm at an angle. Will this work? Will it work? We'll find out together. Ready? Uh oh. Oh, look. It worked at an angle. Oh, blue key. Yay. Wow, I can grab the key so seamlessly now, too. Look at that. So nice that it works on everything else. Oh, God. Oh, I am so bummed. <laughs> So pumped. I cannot express the level of bummitude. Get out of here. Yeah. Stop describing yourself, Foxy. Dum 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 dum. Good one. Thank you. I thought I thought some spicy trash talk would make me feel a little bit better. I hope it worked. It made me feel better. Did it? Well, at least spicier. I hear ya. Great. Alright. So here's this green glow right over there. I'm a bit... Oh! Milk in the chat. Oh, this would have been good to know. Huh. Milk in the chat says you can't hide once the cellar opens. What?! Are you kidding me?! I'm not sure if that's... Oh no, Sir Untouchable also says once you hear the cellar door open, you can't hide it. What the heck? So apparently that sound is, is your cue to beeline it. Oh, that is such BS. I'm upset about that. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Why, why would you... Why would you... See, that's just not fair. That's, that's I gotta say, bad... Bad game design. Like, and I, and I don't throw that around, like, needlessly, but I think, you know, if you have a mechanic and you establish how that mechanic works through the gameplay, which this very clearly does, and does well, that's great. But now, me as the player, I'm operating under the assumption that that is how the game is played. And so if... So if suddenly nothing changes and nothing indicates that the gameplay has changed, why would I as the player assume that things are functioning in this world differently, right? Like, I get it. You can make that a mechanic. That's fine. Hey, you can't hide anymore. Cool. But then don't make these glow orange. Like, it's as simple as that. Like, if at a certain point these are no longer useful, they should not glow as if they are still active. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That would have been a good cue. Right? Because you would have known that in advance of that board. You passed right? A couple after. And, and the other thing that's weird about that, too, is, you know, sure, I heard the cellar open, but it's also one of those things like, hold up. I got the key, and the key... I was still able to hide behind things. So, like, it's it's just a weird time to make a core gameplay element disappear, right? Like, I could see, hey, you got the final key. Everything has unlocked, and it's time to beeline it to the center. Like, that makes sense. Like, that makes sense to me. The idea of, oh, here's a random sound cue that happens when you're kind of in close approxi proximity of this thing. Like, that doesn't make sense. So, I don't know. Like, I would advise choosing one and sticking with it, right? Like, as soon as you get the key, beeline it. And that's fine. Or alternatively, or alternatively, like, you know, just make them hideable the entire time to have kind of this midway mechanic doesn't make a whole lot of sense in my professional gamery opinion. But I've never made a video game, but I've played a lot. I've played a lot of video games. Especially a lot of this franchise. So, you know. 
But good, now we know. See, learning opportunities abound. Hey, crows. Thank you, chat, for always knowing the answer. What's that? I said, thank you, chat, for always knowing the answer. Though we are having a couple people say it's a bug as well. So it could be that, and I assume by that they mean the orange glow is a, is a bug that it sticks around. Well, but that's, I mean, that's the thing. I think, like, whether, because I, I would assume it's probably a bug. Like, I, I doubt, th this team's good, right? They've done a really good job with this game. And so I firmly believe that it's not an intentional decision mm. and that it's a bug. But, like, <laughs> we got we to gotta fix that bug, friends. Got to fix that bug before I defend, you know, before I attempt a couple hours of grinding away at the same frustrating minigame. Shoot. I hear you. Another helpful tidbit from uh, Moonflame in the chat. Apparently, when you get all the keys, there's a sound cue of a, of a clock that is supposed to guide you over to where the um, the purple key is. Really? I didn't hear that, and I, I have headphones on up. too, so. Cool. One sec. Yeah, I was gonna say, I didn't hear that at all. But maybe it's subtle and we were just talking about it. We do talk a lot. Uh, yeah, there was nothing over here, okay. We do. We are rather verbose. There we go. Uh, you know, at some point, I might have to just hop to over to the final night of whatever and give this a little break because there's been a lot of, a lot of corn maze in my life recently. Oh, we are so close. I'm getting updated info on this clock. More specifics rolling in from the front. Oh, excellent. Cat news, news from the front, huh? News from the front. Cat Tomeo and Meaty say it is not a ticking noise. It's actually a clock chime that is supposed to guide you to the key. Really? That's interesting. Chad, is this a repeating chime noise or is this just a chime announcing that it's purple key time? Like, is it gonna help us find it, I guess? Or is it just letting us know it's time to find it? That it's time to find. Are you kidding me? Oh, they are nowhere to be found, friend. Hey, Foxy. Foxy. See any keys lately? You and me, buddy. Can we maybe work on this together? Okay. Hey, Foxy! Hey, Foxy! Hey, buddy! Bubba! Bambino! Foxy, baby, Bubby! Here you go, come on. Green! I need green! Show me green! Any day now. Show me green key! Show me! What are you guys doing? Are you guys gonna jump scare me again? I hear I hear a lot of movement happening off camera. It's got me unnerved, Chris. <laughs> no, we're not. There's there's too few of us. I was gonna say, there's only two people here right now. Like, like if you were to jump scare me in this moment, I feel like that would be mean and excessive. No, we were just passing notes. Oh, do you guys know secrets? It was uh, it was just uh, Dan had was doing a little live research. Oh, nice! And he was and he was giving me some info. Yeah, you come up with anything, Dan? He was clarifying that it's it is in fact it is in fact when the cellar door opens that you can't hide and not after the key, huh. just in case. So here's key four. Ah! Oh, I hear it. 
hear the chimes. So that's interesting. I did hear chimes. Four chimes for four keys. Is that what it was? I assume it was four chimes. This is elaborately hidden. <sighs> and I'm assuming the cellar door is based on proximity. The cellar there it is. door, I Hold think, up. is in there. I got it. Oh. I need to find a hiding spot immediately. Shoot. Shoot. Oh, damn it. Come on. Okay. 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 It's based on proximity. Because I'm there. I can grab it. I believe so. I'm waiting for the chat to catch up. Because I'm just waiting. Because we're here. We got it. Just going to wait for him to phase again. And then from here... Here we go. Got it. I think you are good until you hear that cellar door. But I assume once you get close, it opens. <laughs> so here's the thing. I heard it. Well, I no, heard you heard his scythe. Was that his scythe? Yeah. Okay. Because I wanted to hide before I heard anything. Okay. I think you should probably hang here until you... Yep. And then we just got to make a beeline where he is. Because that's about where we're going. There it is. Shoot, where is it? Shoot, where is it? Oh, man. Oh, no. Wait, it's this way. This way. Go, 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 go. Here it is. 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 Go, 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 go. Woo! Oh, where, where the heck am I? It's the barn. It's the barn. Oh. No way. Oh, this is terrifying. Game one, claim your prize. <gasps> oh, damn. Oh, 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 no. Oh, no. Okay, so we're down in the cellar. Oh, my gosh. What is this? I'm like simultaneously terrified and still running on the adrenaline of having done that stupid maze. And, like, I have so many emotions going through me. Okay, so there's... This is terrifying. So we have claw marks through the, the banner. We're underground. We're underground in a cellar. It's like a wine cellar or whatever. But the party's down here. Oh, this is crazy. And there's an axe. I'm assuming that when I pick this up, something's going to happen. Uh, can I grab the axe, maybe? No. Okay. Oh! Claim your prize. So here's this. This box is random. I'm assuming you are the thing that I'm supposed to claim. It's weird that there's a box. I guess there's nothing there. Hold up. Can I phase? Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so I'm Like, I am so high on adrenaline. <laughs> that was so hard, guys. Oh, OK. Can you phase through the box? Anything in the box? What's in the box? What's in the FNAF VR box? Nothing. Okay. All right. Anything in the bucket? Nothing in the bucket. Okay, I guess it's... Just... So there's gifts. <sighs> okay, let's pick up the mask, I guess. <gasps> Is this... It's like Glitch Trap's face, isn't it? Well, it's a little different. It, I mean, it's, it is and it isn't, right? Yeah. Ooh, there's a candle. 
underneath the mask. That's creepy and weird. Ooh. That's terrifying! Ah! <laughs> oh my god, we did it! <laughs> oh! Oh, so is that it? I mean, it, it took us back out to like the main area, so that's like beating it. It's crazy. That's crazy! <laughs> oh! I'm so happy. I'm so happy. That was so hard. That was so tense, and I heard him moving, and when I took the wrong turn, I thought it was dead. Oh! So good. Okay, so. And I'm assuming this still doesn't do anything, right? I know we gotta do danger keep out. Maybe. I mean, does danger keep out unlock anything? I, I, I'll... I, from what I understand, this is the main This thing. is the main thing. Huh. So what's, it, oh God, okay. Oh, what's it all mean? Oh my gosh. Uh, 1983, um. Why, why is there, why are all these 1983 references? I mean, obviously we're talking about FNAF 4 area because you have the house, you have, I mean, you have, you have the house, which is clearly a reference to FNAF 4. You have 83, which is a reference to FNAF 4. You have an underground barn bunker in the middle of a cornfield. With a map. So, like, is this the th is this the thing that gets like William or whatever to start? Like, that doesn't make any sense. He puts on the mask because he gets calm when he puts on the mask, right? Like, the breathing tempo clearly slows. It's exciting, but it's also a gift. But you also have things that are ripped up as though an animatronic ripped into him. This whole thing is like old, like it's not new. It's like derelict. And I don't know if that's like spooky or if this is like a flash to the past. <sighs> what does it mean? What does it mean? Okay. Wait, is um is Glitch Trap still dancing on the hill now that he found the mask? No, but I mean I he's been kind of he hasn't consistently been doing that. He's uh. kind of just been coming and going. Honestly, so I can't really say that that's a regular thing. Also, it wasn't that only a nightmare, like in the the neon mode. Um, I forget if it was just neon mode. Here, let me see. Right, because it was this. It was press the button. It was stare at this. And then it was turn around. And Dread bears? No, so, okay, so there he is. So it's interesting, right? In nightmare mode, once you push the button, you see him dancing off in the distance, right? Because there he is right now. He's he's doing his, his shtick back there. Doing his little ballet, Flight of the Valkyries. Uh, what does that mean? What does it mean? Oh my gosh, okay. It's like you're getting the killer's mask either for the first time or it's being passed along since FNAF VR is all about this like passing of the torch idea, right? Where I'm like, oh, glitch trap or the spirit of William Afton or the code or whatever has possessed the new generation of killer. Is this, oh, I wonder. That's interesting. Huh. If as a part of like glitch trap, possessing your mind or possessing your body or like brainwashing you or whatever is there a world where he's he's told you to go to this location and find his mask or whatever i wonder i wonder similar to how in sister location william afton tells uh mike eggs benedict to go down to the sister location and find her his sister to free her free entered whatever that whole thing ends up being like clearly william is a character who passes 
his missions onto other people so that way they can fulfill them when he's no longer able to. So maybe this is another instance of that, right? Where Glitch Trap, now in the mind or whatever of the, the tester or us as the player, whoever he's possessed, is now taking us down to the underground to like start the killing spree anew with his like favorite mask or whatever. It is a slightly different mask, but I'm assuming that's just changes with time or changes with code or, you know, like... Well, it's like, a, it's a mask you'd wear as a human as opposed to an animatronic yeah. face covering. Yeah, I agree, right? That's And that's honestly one of the things that, like, with this franchise, you just kind of have to roll with is in the early days, it was easy, and especially for me in the early theories to say, like, oh, they're... Uh, he, this one is slightly different than the original design, and it's just Scott updates them, right? Like Springtrap in Ultimate Custom Night looks different than Springtrap in FNAF 3, because and and uh, Scrap Trap looks slightly different, and it's more so just like updates, new merch, look different, whatever. But I think they're the intention is for them to stay the same character, and I think that bunny mask is very clearly related to the mask or the face of glitch trap be a manimatronic computer program whatever and so knowing that that computer program is based on like a real life killer and that mask is presumably his mask or whatever oh that's so interesting oh okay so what So what else? Well, now that you're back here, I heard you can do something uh, if you go to the prize corner and put on the mask while holding the glitch trap plush. <coughs> what? Apparently, if you take the mask and the glitch trap plush and you kind of hold one and put on the other, you, you take get the lime and the special... coconut and you mix it all up? Yeah. You get a little a little Diet Coke and lime, which, by the way, I always hated Diet Coke and lime. Is that an unpopular opinion? I don't know if that's an unpopular. I am not a big fan of Diet Coke and lime. I like vanilla Diet Coke, and they sell it in, like, Australia, and I don't know why they do it here. They don't do it here. They have Diet Coke orange for some reason, or Coke orange, but they don't have vanilla. Um, but, yeah, I've never been the biggest fan of the Diet Coke. I'm always surprised. Still no showtime. <laughs> Still, in case you were wondering, <laughs> showtime. Still, why? Why is there this huge button in this game since the beginning? <laughs> Whatever. So you said go to prize counter, hold the bunny. And put on the mask. Oh, oh, jeez. <laughs> I thought I would have to like summon it or whatever. That's actually terrifying. The fact that it's just hanging out there. Is anything else different? Not really. So you said put on the mask, hold the bunny. It's interesting that he has a spot over his eye. God, this bunny mask is like something out of like a 1980s horror movie. Here we go. And look at how like bloody and gross it looks on the end. Look at how gross this is. This, the, I gotta say, the design of this is legitimately horrific. Huh, that's weird. Is that like, sorry, before I put this on, I'm, I'm really excited to see what this is, but before I put it on, I'm just noticing. It's weird that he's got like his eyelashes, and those are kind of his like eyebrows, I guess. It's just a weird. It's a weird thing to have both of on a right? cartoon. Like, yeah, and for the eyelashes to like, or the eyebrows to not really match, the, it's strange. Oh, gross, gross. Yes, I hear you. I know. No. There's no miscommunication. What? I understand. Yes, I have it. I made it myself. I think you would like it. No, no one suspects anything. No one suspects anything. Don't worry. I'll be ready. And I won't let you down. It will be fun. <laughs> no! Really? Ooh. Woo! 
What? Oh, that's nuts! Oh yeah, buddy. Oh, oh yeah. I think I think this. I mean, obviously now, now that I know what's going on, I can start working on the theory, I guess. But to me, my initial impulse is to me, my initial impulse is that <laughs> you know, kitties, <laughs> cuddle up with me at night. <laughs> To me, I think that, that says, that kind of confirms everything that we were suspecting with the last Five Nights, um, or sorry, not the last one where it was like the reboot, uh, but the one prior when we did on FNAF VR, where the torch has been passed down, you have the, the cassette tape woman um, who was talking about the glitches potentially being possessed and lying to us as the player, and now we're trapped in here. I think what this is saying is, hey, I hear you're a part of me now, or I'm hearing your voice in my head or whatever, and you're telling me to do this thing. And so I handcrafted a mask, fashioned out of your image, and I'm here to do your bidding. No one suspects anything. I look like anyone else, and I will carry on your work. Glitch Trap, William Afton, Spring, spring Trap, blah, 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 you know, any number of names for the killer. I think that's what that means, right? I, I'll, I'll look into it. I also really want to make sure I uh, listen to the voices again. Here, actually, on that note, since we can. Um, there's so many Halloween things. I'm assuming it's all candy. There's so many Halloween things to unlock. Okay, here, I'm going to hop back. Let me just... Shoot, how do we, how do I do this again? It was, it was this, right? That's here, there we go. Let me grab the candy out of that cassette tape. God, this room is so intimidating, going back to it. I was told I had three days to finish Jeremy's work, but I know it's just passing the time. They lied to us. They lied to all of us. It sounds like her, doesn't it? It's a female voice, which is interesting. So the next generation of killer, regardless, is going to be a female. Um, can I hear it again? Probably not. Yes, I hear you. I know. It's a little bit younger. No. But it's close. There's no miscommunication. I understand. Yes, I have it. I need it myself. Right, it's 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 a slightly younger sounding voice, but the tonality of it sounds the same, especially like some of the like S sounds and like C sounds, the like sibilant sounds I think is the right word for it. Like that feels similar. That's so cool. It's so it's one half of a conversation though. Right? I was told I had three days to finish Jeremy's work. Right, this is slightly older but I know and more mature. Just passing the time. But she has that like I don't know, kind of like, you have a little, like, extra saliva in the back of your mouth or whatever. And it, I feel like that other voice might have it, too. I might just be hearing it, but... Right? So it's one half of a conversation, which seems to indicate that, again, she's, like, talking to herself in her own head, because Glitch Trap is in her head. Oh! So cool! So cool! That was so worth all the... <laughs> all the fresh... That's, that's a good one. Like, sometimes you get to the end of these, like, Golden Freddy modes, beat all the things, and, you know, unlock all the stars in FNAF 3, 2, whatever, and the end result is like, meh, not, nothing exciting. Like, there's not anything particularly impactful or different, or it's just like, hey, you achieved, you achieved it, well done. Um, but FNAF VR has been the gift that keeps on giving, I think, in terms of like, hey, there's a reward if you beat the game. Hey, there's an even bigger reward if you get all the tapes. Hey, there's a reward if you get a bunch of the coins. Hey, there's a reward if you play the DLC and beat the really hard thing in there too. Like, it's great. 
And there's so much material in it, and it's it's so clear to me, again, this idea of this one being the start of the next generation of FNAF. Like, this is this is the turning point. I'm curious where the AR game fits in, if the AR game fits in. Um, but it's very clearly to me, like, hey, we've unloaded the baggage of the past. Don't get me wrong, the story of the first five, six games is definitely a contained thing that can and, you know, should be solved unto itself. But as far as this next generation goes, we're starting kind of fresh and anew. Like, you can figure out all that stuff, and if you really want a deep knowledge of everything that we've come through and, and discovered up to this point, like, that's great. You can solve that. But if you're new to this franchise, if you're going to be one of the movie viewers, if you're going to be potentially one of the new book readers, you don't need to know anything about, like, you know, the, the, the deep lore of the old pizzerias. You just need to know, like, something bad happened there, and now we're in this new generation with this female killer, I guess, this, this female kind of, like, next generation uh, passing of the torch uh, person who's waiting for whatever it is, waiting for the call uh, to start kind of the task that she's been set out for from William Afton. Um, cool. That was great. Guys, thank you for your help. Because uh, if I had just had to figure that out myself, I would have been so frustrated. And there is nothing so painful as getting to the end of a very difficult, uh, very time-consuming, very tedious kind of like mission, like find all the keys in the maze, then find the bonus key, and then to not know what you're doing wrong or like be subject to a bug. And then had you not told me, I would have probably done the same thing over and over again to the point of frustration so but the reward was super worth it um this game is terrifying i think i've said it multiple times on all the fnaf vr streams but i think this is a great fnaf game i think it's probably the best fnaf game i think it's the best uh i think it's one of the best vr experiences especially if you're into like scary stuff uh it's, it's solid from a gameplay standpoint. Sure, there are bugs. Sure, I don't know why Showtime doesn't work. That's frustrating. And you'll see that we have 29 out of 30 coins because the one coin, as uh, if you watched our initial FNAF VR stuff, like we just couldn't get. It was slightly out of our reach and there was no way to glitch and get it. Um, so there's definitely like bugs and stuff that are I'm hoping are ironed out or whatever, but it's great. Uh, it's scary. The lore is interesting, but not convoluted. And I like where things are headed. I'm really excited about kind of FNAF the next generation, um, to use kind of like a, a trite phrase from horror movies. But it's cool, and I couldn't have done it without you guys. So I'm so thankful, and I'm so excited to have beaten that. And it feels like a big gamer. This is one of those like big gamer accomplishments. Uh, so there you go, guys. I'm, I'm assuming we're probably close to time. It feels like we're close to time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Really? What time is it? Oh, we're right on time. It oh, perfect. Good. I, I was like, hopefully it's not too late. I have to take care of Stephanie. She's <laughs> sick. Uh, like, I can't be spending like three hours on the same mini game, like grinding away. Cool. Um, so that's it for today. Uh, we'll be back uh, maybe tomorrow, uh, but definitely Thursday. It depends on uh, how Steph's feeling. I know we wanted to get more streaming in just because we've been gone so much of the last couple months. Um, so we might be back tomorrow at 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. If not, we'll absolutely be back on Thursday. Uh, so we will see one of those two days uh, with Luigi's Mansion, and then we're looking at some other things that might be fun, or Chris is looking at some other things that might be fun to play. Uh, so we'll see. But something new, something different. I'm so thankful. Uh, and thank you guys so much for watching. Before and we oh, go. Whoa. whoa. You Hold up. Chris the... is calling an audible right now. I know. Before you make the big ending, yeah. the chat is spamming something that I think might be worth showing while we're still live. They're saying tape nine with the mask. Really? That is <coughs> that is what's being spammed in the chat right now. Are they now. are they just making the connect? Weird. Okay. Really? I alright. Ooh, how exciting! <laughs> Even more exciting than what's already happened. Wow. Okay. Tape nine with the mask. Okay. <coughs> uh, that would mean I need to go to prize counter. God, this thing is terrifying every time. Do I still have the mask on? 
Do I need the bunny too or no? Um, not getting anything in the chat about having the bunny there with you, but shout us out. So it's worth noting that I don't have the mask on anymore? There was something that looked like a Halloween mask laying on the floor. I didn't understand. Ink must have spilled. It was only then that I heard a shuffle from the testing room and realized Jeremy must be there. I went back and peered in the window. I couldn't see his face. He had the visor covering his head. He had ink spilled on himself as well. The front of his shirt looked black in the dark room. He turned his head in my direction, but I don't think he knew I was there. Are we just drawing a connection between the two? I guess so. Okay. So, I know a lot of people take what she's saying literally in that moment. It's not a, I, I, it's not a mask, it's his face. It's gotta be his face. Like, they very specifically mentioned that it's in the dark room, that I couldn't see his face, he had the mask on, the visor on, he had severe injuries. I really firmly believe that he uses the paper cutter to slice off his face or whatever. Which, in and of itself, it feels like a reference to Withered Bonnie for some reason, uh, because Withered Bonnie has the face ripped off. I'm not 100% sure how that whole thing works out, but I don't think it's a literal mask. I think when she's like, it's like a Halloween mask, it's literally like, woo, here's a thing of skin. I mean, granted, this is a Halloween mask. See, it, it can't, I can't take it with me, so. There was something that looked like a Halloween mask laying on the floor. Because it's also Jeremy, understand. right? Ink must have spilled. It was only then that I heard a shuffle from the testing room and realized Jeremy must be there. I went back and peered in the window. I couldn't see his face. He had the visor covering his head. Right, like he had ink spilled on himself as well. The front of his shirt looked black in the dark room. Because it's a dark he turned room. Turned his head in my direction, but I don't think he knew I was there. So the question is, I mean, is it a vocal? So it's interesting. Like the voice actress. I don't know if it, if the emphasis is right, because is it a dark room? Because the way she says it, it's a dark room, which would be a place where you process photography, which is usually tinted red. Um, so that way the, the uh, actual like uh, processing of the photographs doesn't get ruined by light shining in. Um, and so if you're in a red room and there's like red blood, it would look black, like it looks black, just looks dark, right? Uh, but if it's a, if instead the, of the way she says it, dark room, it's a dark room, like a, just a dim room, which would make sense. You know, now there's a little bit more leeway there. But again, like blood would look dark like ink because there's not a whole lot of light. Um, it's just, it would be, if it was really a mask, if it was literally a Halloween mask that we're talking about, that feels, it just feels too on the nose. Like, oh, it's like a Halloween mask. And why would you call out, I'm not able to see his face? Like, if I'm a writer of these tapes as a storyteller, right, the details matter. And so for her to be like, there's maybe ink everywhere, some, some dark substance that looked like ink everywhere, and there's something that looks like a Halloween mask on the floor, and I can't see his face. To me, to say that is actually ink and a Halloween mask, like, that feels almost too literal. It's it's too like, let me let me say it might be, but then very obviously that's it. Like that feels too direct and too literal. If I was writing it, I would write that with the intention of it being I like I sliced he sliced off his face, and the reason I'm saying you can't see his face because it's behind the mask is the true horror of what it really is can't be visible because you can't make out what he's done to himself. Um, that's my interpretation. I do think. And I see why you would think that, like, hey, now that we have actual Halloween masks in the game, not just with this, but with all the other, like, character masks, uh, I think we unlocked one of them, maybe? Maybe not? But, like, you have all the Halloween masks in the Trick or Treat game. It's interesting. The, the inclusion of masks is particularly interesting because, yeah, you have the Halloween mask reference in Tape 9, but it also ties back to FNAF 4, and I think this is one of the interesting things about it. Um, the fact that in FNAF 4, which is set in 1983, which is when the DLC takes place and where that trick-or-treat game takes place, you have all the masks of the various characters. And so I think one of the things that no one had ever talked about, including us, and I don't think anyone was really thinking about, is like, there are four bullies 
who ultimately sacrificed the crying child up to Golden Fredbear, who then gets eaten, right? Um, and they're wearing masks. And I think the reason we all just assumed that they were wearing masks was just like, their faces don't matter. It's to show symbolically that they represent these characters, that they're fans of these characters. Fans of these characters. I don't think anyone ever really stopped to think about like, well, what does it mean for kids to be wearing masks of these characters? And it's interesting that this game is set in 1983 and is showing us Halloween masks of these characters existed at this time. Uh, so presumably the kids, what they're wearing are those Halloween masks. And so we have a physical connection, but then in addition, it's one of those things where the franchise of Freddy Fazbear's in 1983 had to have been popular enough to warrant the production of Halloween masks. And I know sometimes people get frustrated or uh, confused when I'm like inserting real business terms into like the actual timeline of Freddy Fazbear, but you kind of have to like the whole sister location business, the opening and shutting of different restaurants and reopening of restaurants. Like you have the business elements of Freddy Fazbear's, it's, it's strangely mixed into the lore of it all. And so if by 1983 there was production of toys, uh, Chica toys and masks and whatever, like the franchise was already big at that point. And so really the birth of Freddy's has to happen so early that it, then it takes off explosively. So anyway, like there's a lot that I've been thinking about. One of the other things that I've had on my to-do list for a while as I think about future FNAF theories is, follow, I call it follow the missing Chica, because very clearly Chica is in some games and very clearly isn't in some games, and that's intentional, and I think it says a lot about the franchise and the timeline of events that's going on, but I can't quite wrap my, I've never looked at the whole franchise with that one, every time I write one of these things, I look back at the franchise with like one specific like intent in mind to see like what clues reveal itself when I look at it through this lens, um, which always yields something new and different. Uh, and so that's one that's also been on my to-do list for a while. Like why is Chica just popping in and out? I think that's an important linchpin in all this. Um, so yeah, I think the masks are really interesting and but, but as far as tape nine is concerned, I, I swear, it's gotta be his face. Why would you bring up the paper cutter earlier? Why would you bring up all this stuff that looks like a mask or looks like blood when it's, if it is actually that, that just feels so on the nose. Um, the paper cutter, man, he's gotta do something with his face, right? And then it connects back to Withered Bonnie. Anyway, I gotta go, I gotta take care of Steph. I could talk, I mean, you know, I could talk about FNAF forever. I have way too much knowledge about this franchise. Uh, think about it way too often. Um, but anyway, now I can get started in earnest on this uh, FNAF VR DLC Curse of Dreadbear theory that I was hoping to get done for next week. Uh, we'll see. Fingers crossed. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, hopefully send your love and well wishes to Stephanie to feel better. And I will see you all either tomorrow or Thursday. And remember, that's just a stream. A live stream! Chris! Since you have the chat, let's take it away. Uh, people are saying go to Scott Games' website, which, of course, you will do as you're researching this next episode. Is it new? Is there something new now? Uh, people are saying there's a new thing that will relate to the lore of this game, so that's great. So much. Shinny 2.0 says Amazing. Bendy did it, and Brody Board Bendy. says GG, and then Willow says see ya. Woo! We did it!